Hello and welcome to St. Alban the Martyr Episcopal Church. Service tonight is led by Bishop Mark Van Poevering. my class so you can hear me a bit better when I speak. It's a joy to be here, to see you, to be able to worship together uh, in this sacred space. And it's getting nice and toasty as well. So yeah. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God and the Christ, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, we see our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. Because in our weaknesses we can do nothing good without you. Give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. The lesson today is from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, who, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious, above all else it is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The psalm today is Psalm 1. It's on page 585. I'll give you a minute to find it. We'll read responsibly, responsibly, a whole verse. 
Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is The epistle is 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
may the words of my lips and the meditations in all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Well, today we heard in the Gospel Jesus' manifesto, the clearest statement of uh, what he expects of his followers, both then and now. This Sermon on the Mount has come to be known as the Beatitudes, or Blessings. And as you know, they are found in both the Gospels of St. Luke and St. Matthew, although I think Matthew's version is probably better known and less harsh. In the film, The Chosen, have any of you seen any of that? I highly recommend it. Jesus is depicted preparing this sermon on a small hill as he overlooks the encampment of the disciples. And as he imagines each blessing, the image of one of his disciples comes into view. Nathaniel, the poor in spirit. Mary Magdalene, those who mourn. James and John, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. The words take on an added poignancy as it relates each blessing to a particular person. However, here in Luke, he takes a very different approach. First of all, this should not surprise us. Jesus' teaching ministry lasted more than three years, so it's likely that he would have taught similar things multiple times. Kind of like me pulling a sermon out of the drawer and using it at another place, but changing the context like I didn't do that. Unlike Matthew, Luke tells of Jesus offering both blessings and woes. He presents his customary clear focus to include outsiders like the poor, women, and the outcast in a universal invitation for all to follow Jesus. I think St. Luke wants us to see that discipleship is more than private spiritual practice. It belongs in the public square. It has social, political, and particularly economic consequences. In fact, I know a wonderful Christian teacher who told me that he always prepares new converts by teaching them first to give and then to pray. He says that the pocketbook says a lot about the focus of our hearts. Once we start to joyfully give, then we are ready to pray in earnest. Well, in Luke, Jesus gives four sets of blessings and then reverses them with four sets of woes. He sets up contrasts between poor and rich, hungry and well-fed, those who weep and those who laugh the hated, and the admired. Much like Mary's song, the Magnificat, this highlights the way in which God is turning everything upside right in the world as woes turn into blessings. This is certainly good news for the poor, the hungry, the weeping, and the outcast. But what about us? It becomes rather awkward for us who live comfortable lives. I think Jesus is telling us to be alert, to be careful. A comfortable life easily distracts us from following Him. We begin to start believing that we have value because of what we possess. And then we turn that on our view of others as well. To this kind of attitude, Jesus says, woe to you. 
of course, we all have hardships in our lives, but most of the challenges we face, and there have been quite a few lately, rarely descend to the level of life and death, or whether we have enough to eat. The woes listed in the Gospel of St. Luke bother us because we often place our security in our achievements and acquisitions. But for many, especially those who would have heard Jesus that day, and for many Christians around the world, these woes would have been common occurrence, and his words of reversal would have comforted, not threatened them. Jesus still offers real hope to those who are suffering now. He tells them that even though they are hungry, poor, weeping, and despised, God loves them. God loves you, too. God cares for all of us. God wants us to thrive. And we, God's people, God's church, must say the same. These words challenge us Christians to examine our involvement in a consumerist culture that entices us always to have more and better. We are told that the good life is found in accumulation. We search for the things that will make us happy, yet happiness never comes, or at least it doesn't last. Searching and coming up empty can bring us to a miserable place. The way of Jesus calls us to create space in our schedules, in our homes, and in our finances for what really matters. It calls us to a life with Jesus, to abide in his goodness, and to enjoy life to the full in the kingdom of God as it comes. Let's face it, it's kind of hard to live the Christian life in complete comfort. That's why we need each other, a distinctive community of faith, asking hard questions and living by a different set of values, examining what it means to live the Christian life. The first and most basic thing we can and must do is keep God as our central focus. This is the reminder that Jesus places before his disciples. And we begin to achieve this by turning our lives over to God as we follow Jesus. This can be challenging. We have many bad habits, and there are many other paths that we could follow. But they are only habits, learned like any other, and they can be broken. New, grace-filled habits replace the former ones as we take intentional steps toward keeping God before us. Soon our minds will return to God as the needle of a compass constantly points us true north. Because following Jesus will become our polar star, the star of our inward beings as we point toward the way of God. In our diocese, we have been teaching the five spiritual practices to help us on our way. Pray, study, serve, give, and share. Each habit has an individual component and a communal aspect. So for instance, to pray. Each of us are called to pray five times a day when we wake we give thanks to God for the new day and ask for open eyes and hearts to take full advantage of the opportunities that God will place before us. At each time we take a meal, we thank God for the provisions that he blesses us with. And in the evening, as we reflect on the day, 
We bring our concerns and those we love before God in prayer. So too, the other four habits. As a community, we gather here weekly in prayer to meet with the living God, to be changed in that encounter of word and sacrament. We come to support one another and to learn from each other. We come to share our joys and our sorrows as a family of God. Practicing these habits keeps us focused on the ways of God rather than the ways of the world. And this is an opportunity for us who have much to embrace a simplicity of life that is gospel focused. In an oracle from the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verses 7 to 8, the plaintiff says to God on his deathbed, Two things I ask of you, do not deny them to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that I eat. Teach us to be satisfied, good Lord, with enough. Jesus teaches with authority. And after Pentecost, that same power is given by the Spirit to his people, the church, to you and to me. Because we are to be that voice of blessing from God for the whole world, starting right here. In Since I've been in Kentucky, I found out that the expression, bless your heart, has many meanings. Not all of them good. So the blessing of our gospel is not just about happiness. It goes much deeper than that. It might be better to think of it as meaning fortunate. That is, you are fortunate because you now understand your need for God in this life. You can see. Luke's Gospel was written almost one generation after the resurrection of Jesus and the founding of the church. So he wants to show folks what it means to follow Jesus and practice as a community of faith. To be rich toward God no matter how long it takes or how many obstacles we face on the way. He is showing us what it means to be a loving, liberating, life-giving movement of people who follow Jesus in the way of life. We are called to fill in those woeful gaps created in an unjust world. Gaps in food security, like your blessing box, clean water, access to quality health care and education. Gaps in loneliness, affirmation and acceptance. Gaps that exist all around the globe and right around the corner. As we pray, study, serve, give and share, we create grace-filled habits. And this is our calling, to be the church and be the change. And as God's church, we begin to change woes into blessings. Right here, right now. May it be so with us in this place. Amen. So please stand with me as we profess our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God of the God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten from not made, of one 
being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he began to come from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers to the people are found in form four on page 380. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal glory in your world. We pray this morning and the disciple of prayer for the divine Seiko Kai. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the way of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, who grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We may help your own petitions now in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all of your saints in your eternal kingdom. As your petitions this time. Pray for Sandy Stone, the priest of our church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now let us turn to God and confess our sins against Him and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against You in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. And that we may be in your will, wrong in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. When Jesus found his friends locked away in an upper room, full of fear and anxiety about the future. And he came to them and gave them his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And saw for one another a sign of Christ. Uh, I only have one announcement, that is that the uh, Bishop's Discretionary Fund this year is being used to support lay ministry in our diocese. Uh, we've recognized that uh, we haven't done a very good job of preparing and promoting all God's people uh, for ministry. And we're all called to ministry, to service. One of the five habits, remember, to serve. And so uh, this year, because of a grant for us to be one of six dioceses in the Episcopal Church to have a program for lay preachers to be trained, a two-year program, it uh, created in me the idea that we need to promote all the ministries of the church for the lay people. And the word that's been on my mind as I prayed was to release the people of God into these opportunities for service. And so that means to create uh, clear opportunities for all God's people to serve, uh, formation uh, that leads to licensed ministries. We have them in the diocese, but we haven't used them for many years, maybe decades. <coughs> and to release God's people into these various forms of service. One of the challenges in our church, historically, has been the divide between lay and ordained, which is neither biblical nor part of our true understanding. Ordained ministry is not meant to be above the people of God. It's meant to be the servant of God's people to serve. And so, in this way, uh, we're trying to re-emphasize God's call on all of us to be servants in different ways. A point of personal privilege to tell a joke. Uh, when you spoke about us meeting afterwards, it reminded me of a story I heard of a wonderful speaker who came from Europe to the United States and was on a tour of the eastern seaboard. He was given a chauffeur-driven limousine to take him from Boston to New York, down the coast. After the third or fourth talk, the chauffeur and the speaker had become quite close because they had these long journeys together. And he said, Doc, I've heard that talk so many times, I think I can give it myself. <laughs> and he said, all right, tomorrow we're in Philadelphia. You give the speech. And he did. Dressed up in his chauffeur's suit, he stood behind the podium and gave the talk word for word, gesture for gesture. Standing ovation at the end. And then it was the time for questions. And a young woman stood up and asked the most convoluted question. He had no idea what she was even talking about. And so he looked her in the eyes and said, that is such a simple question. My chauffeur in the back will answer it. <laughs> if questions become difficult after the service, I'll ask my chauffeur to answer them. <laughs> Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
ですね The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give the thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son. Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, body, and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, 
and kingdom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ in the bread of heaven.
that is correct. Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all of our understandings. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you plan on attending our services in person, we do ask a few things. At this time in accordance with the CDC, we ask that all who enter, mask up and socially distance, to protect our elderly congregation. If you need one, we have some at the door, along with hand sanitizer. We hope that in the future, we can return to normal. Until then we hope to see you soon. Remember to follow us on Instagram at St. Albans Moorhead.